very special human being. That person is Dan Barish. Of all the diseases known to man, perhaps the most cruel is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, which typically strikes down those in perfect health in the prime of their lives without warning. Here are the words of one man whose life has been shattered by this devastating neuromuscular disease. His name is Dan Barish, and he writes, I'm Dan Barish. I live in Seattle with my wife, Susan, and sons, Andrew, 16, and Jonathan, 12. In my wallet, I carry a card with phone numbers on one side and a message on the other. Please forgive my disabilities. I suffer from ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, a progressive motor neuron ailment which disables skeletal muscles. It affects speech, swallowing my limbs. In late 1980, when I was 56, I considered myself reasonably healthy. When the neurologist pronounced a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, I couldn't. I went to the library and fearfully read a brief description of the disease as incurable, relentless, cruel. My deliberately hazy view of aging was that I would grow old equally in all dimensions starting about age 70. The Lord had never issued me a contract for 100 years of good health, but I had just kind of assumed, even if it was ALS, perhaps I could go on productively for two to four years, three to five years, or even 10 years. The blow to my wife was horrendous. How would the survivor survive? How would our family get along? What will happen to our boys? In the summer, I told our sons separately. Undoubtedly, they had both sensed the shadows falling over the household. I told Andrew, our eldest, then 14, that the left arm weakness I had would spread. He came right out and asked me if ALS would kill me. I told him that life killed everyone and that ALS weakened people so that something like respiratory failure did the killing. Our younger son, Jonathan, then only 10, appeared to comprehend without being able to discuss it. The personal challenges are impressive. Getting dressed or eating a meal is a production. My living experience with ALS is largely up to me and those close to me. We must all learn to live out our lives gracefully, not merely to die with grace. Others who suffer from ALS do have one hope. Their hope is us, the hope that we will care enough to provide the means to unravel the enigma of this cruel disease. A day or two before last year's telethon, Dan Barish died. We weren't able to help him, save him. This year, thousands of others will die unless, unless together we join to help in the battle against ALS and the other equally tragic muscle diseases that afflict thousands like Dan Barish. Your pledge, a simple phone call to your neighbor who volunteers to answer MDA's pledge phones is the assurance that one day we will save the Dan Barishes. That's a promise. Thanks. Dan Barish is a man that we can never forget. Please, call the number you see on your screen and make your pledge now. And here at one of our pledge centers, is Tony Roberts with important words for all of us. Remember the first time you called somebody up to ask for a date? How you kept dropping the phone because your hands kept perspiring? Well, when you call us here at the Pledge Center, I can guarantee that you won't hear we can't talk to you because we're washing our hair. We really want to hear from you. Truly. Honest. Call us now. What you'll hear is, thanks for helping. We're waiting for your call. Our thanks to you, Tony. Now, to take us back to Jerry and more of the telethon, making all of us feel those good vibrations, Papa Do Run Run. And the way the sunlight plays upon her hair. Oh, the wind that lit 
We're about to rejoin Jerry and more of the 1986 Muscular Dystrophy Telethon live from Las Vegas. Standby stations, 10 seconds to go. Palace in Las Vegas with Billy Preston, Betty White, Shelley Berman, Julius LaRosa, and the national chairman of the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Here he is, Jerry Lewis. So what happened? So I was backstage and I'm talking to all the show people and they send food. They send food. There's enough food back there to, ta to cater Taiwan. <laughs> I never saw anything like it. I mean, Piero send food. Mariano send food. There's pasta back there. I mean, there are Italians now that started out Jewish just about an hour ago. <laughs> We welcome you back to the seventh hour of the 1986 Labor Day Telethon, and I'm happy to see you all and all you nice folks. I hope that you didn't have to stand in line or wait too long. We've been having a lot of fun, and we've been raising some money. It's uh, 11.30 in Las Vegas, which makes it 2.30 in the morning in New York and, in, and uh, 1.30 in Chicago. We have $5,136,380 on the board. Can we... Uh, can we open the curtain and bring the band down? Certainly. Could we bring the band down and open the curtain? That would be a good idea. There because are the curtains. All the, oh, the curtains are opening, and the, look at the band. See Here how, comes the band. See how small they look in the background? There's my band, gang. Come on, bring them down here. Who the hell asked you to take a bow? Bring the band down here. Come on down. Now, while they're bringing you down, Put Strike Up the Band up. Let's get it ready. We'll get a little excitement in this joint. And it'll help the fill, and we can put Betty White on hold, and that VTR will be in a minute. We'll do this, and then we'll go to New York to see Tony, and then we'll carry on. And bring the band down to the number two star mark. Come on, this is going to be fun. This is a very exciting arrangement. It was arranged by a French friend of mine, Pierre Jesuit Duvy. He did this in Paris in 1927, before the accident, when he lost all his teeth. I had nothing to do with the arrangement. Aha! I saw that. I saw the two of you. Aha! They think they're going to win something at 7-Eleven, going with this. <laughs> Anyhow, the, the number is a beautiful, it's a folk tune. <laughs> And it has changes of rhythms. This man, after the accident, had some wonderful parades that he had lived through and had gone to a degree of things. And it just tells the story of much of his energy. And yet, where you going? Hold it. That's the second. St hold it a second. Are you crazy? Hold it. Hold it. Are they holding it? Okay, here we go. And you'll tell by the music as it progresses how this man lived to be fruitful in his life <laughs> without uh, any more canker sores.
The Lou Brown Orchestra, are they wonderful? They've been playing for five days, they've been playing. Okay, thank you. One more time. Uh, uh, there's more coming. And now to New York, where Tony Orlando is standing by to introduce a special guest who will be co-hosting his own television show starting this fall. Here's Tony Orlando, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, maestro. Thank you, Maestro. <laughs> Boy, was that good. Yeah, yeah good, good band. band. Unbelievable. You know, we have a man here, Jerry, who was known to the record world as the fifth Beatle in their prime. The man is here. It is now 2.30 in the morning. We have been working and singing and playing and having one heck of a time waiting for him to finally present his thing to you in Vegas and to all of you across this country. He is an incredible musician, an unbelievable songwriter, an amazing performer, and as Jerry just said, the co-host of the new David Brenner Show. Would you, ladies and gentlemen, welcome the one and only Mr. Billy Preston. <laughs> Thank you. You gotta have something if you wanna be with me. Woo! Nothing from nothing, leave nothing. You got to have something if you wanna be with me. I'm not trying to be your hero, cause that's zero. It's too cold for me I'm not trying to be your highness Cause that minus is too low to see If you wanna be with me, come on, give me something for Jerry. 
Jerry's kids. Come on, give them something for Jerry's kids. God, you got to give some. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and it continues on here in New York. Our next guest is currently starring here in a Broadway show. Would you move that uh, teleprompter so I can, uh, yes, with Bernadette Peters in a song and dance on Broadway. And many of you saw him in the movie, The Chorus Line. Ladies and gentlemen, a man, you ready to do with the feet? Huh? Mr. Greg Burge, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Thank you. What good is melody? What good is music? If it ain't possessing something sweet. It ain't the melody, it ain't the music There's something else that makes this tune complete Well, it don't mean a thing If it ain't got that swing I do what, 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 do what Well, it don't mean a thing All you gotta do is sing I do what, 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 do what It makes no difference if it's sweet or hot Just give the rhythm everything Give it everything you got Well, it don't mean a thing If it ain't got that swinging do what 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 well it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. I do what 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 well it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do what 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 when you see me skipping up and down the street, you know that I've been tipping. I've got no shoes upon my feet. Oh, I'm high. This crazy cat is high. Me, oh my, I'm higher than the sky. On the, on the bottle of D, shut it up with the air. Bottle, bottle, bottle D, ga 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 doobity. Hey, don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing in you. Do what, do what, do what, do what, do what, do what. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Billy. Let's hear it for all those marvelous performers in New York. They can hear you. Okay. 
Would you please welcome a captivating actress, especially in recent years where she became one of the key reasons why you watch The Young and the Restless. Here's Jeannie Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. Our next celebrity to help us at the telephones is a beauty who would have remained a top fashion model in Florida had it not been for some very smart producers who convinced her to go west so she could play the role of a good-natured and worldly wise bartender in the television series Mickey Spillane's My Camera. Please welcome Lee Benton. You love this young actor in 16 Candles, then Volunteers, and recently in the comedy Gung Ho. Here is Getty Watton Abbey. Getty Watton Abbey. You know what I love? When they write the names out phonetically for me. We need to be phonetic with that one. Watanabe. Ah, oh, konnichiwa. Oh, is he smiling? I don't want to look. Is he smiling? Is he laughing? Yeah, am I okay? Our next guest to help with the phones is a versatile and very funny actor who created and sustained the character, character of Lieutenant Mauser in the movies Police Academy 2 and its hit sequel. Please welcome Art Matrano. Hi, Art. Good to see you again. I might add that Art Matrano has been on our telethons over the years, and every time we ask him and he's available, he makes himself available. Thank you, Art, for being here. Helping us with the phones this year is the actress who played the role of Loretta so well on the series Cheers that she's now taping a spin-off series to be ready for mid-season. Please welcome... Thousands of volunteers and hundreds of celebrities are showing their support for Jerry's telephone by answering phones at pledge centers like this one. Show your support, make that call, and pledge now. We will be right back, uh, right after... Uh a billboard or two while they're playing your beautiful music and we slowly sink into the Pacific. It's Casey. Take it away, you son of a gun. <laughs> Don't go away, because coming up, we've got Brian Gumbel of today, Ronald Reagan Jr. from Good Morning in America, and Tony Orlando in New York, also the Oak Ridge Boys, as the 1986 telethon continues. More than words could ever say. This is John Denver asking you to make your United Way pledge now. Because thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. Won't you give for oh, one cent of your love? Don't you people work? I mean, the, I know when these programs are on the air. Cheers, I understand. But for you to know... Sam, I mean the character, and General Hospital, and the other thing, you, you're staying home and you're watching this, is that right? <laughs> I've never been able to figure that out. Thank God for you, and thank God for us, and we're glad that you're all here. Here with us now is a noted television actress, Miss Betty White. Please watch the screen. I'm very happy to be on a great TV show, The Golden Girls. It's about four terrific ladies uh, in their golden years. You know, that, that warm and wonderful time of your life that happens right after you turn 50. I love playing the part. And of course, I have to keep explaining to everyone that it is a part. I'm only 39. <clears throat> On this telethon, we don't kid around. You've probably seen and heard a lot about Jerry's kids. Well, Jerry Lewis would be the first to tell you that there are a lot of Jerry's kids who are not really young. A lot of them have been around a while. They're in their 50s, in their 60s, or older. They're golden years. You see, the Muscular Dystrophy Association is not fighting one disease, but 40. 
40 neuromuscular disorders. Some of them attack children, others affect adults. The truth is, age is no protection against awful diseases like ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and myasthenia gravis that attack the muscles in such a relentless way. These diseases are relentless. But then so is MDA in the way that it's fighting back against muscle diseases. MDA's patient services are making life better for people of all ages with any of these 40 diseases. And MDA's worldwide research program is going to find the treatments and cures we're all praying for. And I know they're going to find them soon. So please make your pledge now to MDA. No one should have the joy of their golden years taken away from them by a cruel and, and awful muscle disorder. Help us beat these killer diseases once and for all. Call now. Thank you, Betty. Betty White, ladies and gentlemen, a nice lady that did that for us. We appreciate it, Betty, very much. And we love your show, The Golden Girls, and all the other people love it also. And here's Ed McMahon. Thank you, Chair. McDonald's restaurants are raising money to fight muscular dystrophy in a variety of exciting ways. Here to tell us more about it are McDonald's crew representatives, Claudia White from the Bronx, New York, and Leon Weiss from Menominee, Wisconsin. Hi there. Are you Claudia? And you're Leanne. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Jerry. Well, in New York, where I'm from, the owners of all the McDonald's restaurants pitched in and raised over $47,000. And in Boston, McDonald's and its customers raised over $70,000 through the McDonald's MDA Love Run. And the money is still coming in from Philadelphia, where McDonald's restaurants are conducting a coloring contest through their Funtime magazine. And here's Leanne to tell us more about fundraising in Wisconsin. Here's Leanne. All right. Hi, Jerry. Hi, dear. A lot of people think that Menominee and Eau Claire, Wisconsin are small towns. But when it comes to raising money for muscular dystrophy, we really think big. This year, our McDonald's restaurants is raising over $40,000 for MDA. And we do this through the canister collections, um, pie socials, and car washes. Claudia and I have to get back to the, to the counting booths right now. But before we go back, I would like to present our current contribution of $265,725. We'll accept that. Thank you. Thank you both very much. And they'll be back with more later. Thank you, girls, very much. Okay, Mr. McMahon. With us now, Jerry, representing the number one chapter of Alpha Phi Omega fraternity in the fight against muscular dystrophy from Kearney State College, Kearney, Nebraska, Harry Allen. Hello, Harry. Hi. Welcome, Harry. Welcome. Come over. I won't bite you. Okay. Jerry, yeah. I'm pleased to be here on this year's MDA Telethon to represent the Alpha Phi Omega National Service Fraternity. My chapter, Xi Beta, has had the distinction of being the outstanding and most successful Alpha Phi Omega fundraising chapter for MDA in each of the past three years. Thanks to the outstanding support we received from the Kearney State Administration and the Kearney community, the Superdance we sponsor has continued to grow each year and has become one of our campus's major events. Alpha Phi Omega chapters nationwide put forth hundreds of hours of extra effort during the school year, conducting special events to help raise the funds MDA needs to carry on its work. Jerry, we know that you can't do it alone, and that's why Alpha Phi Omega chapters across the country are proud to be considered friends of MDA. You and all your kids can continue to count on our support. I'm very proud to be able to present to you this check from the Alpha Phi Omega National Service Fraternity and the amount of $40,000. $40,000. Thank you, Harry. Thank you very much. The young people in this country are the first ones to hear the horn that blows or the sirens that ring when somebody's in trouble. The young people in this country have always been the first to come to the aid of somebody whose plight was being threatened or they were in the position that they needed help, I should say. And it's really marvelous to see what the young people in the colleges in the country in this country are doing today. And we're going to have a lot more for you to meet during the course of this program. Right now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you a performer 
that you know is the comedian who was the true innovator of the first comedy album, becoming the first such performer to win a Grammy Award for a non-musical recording. Here is comedian and actor, Mr. Shelley Berman. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome her. Thank you very much for welcoming me. You didn't really sustain, but after all, this is a tough evening. There's an awful lot of serious stuff going on, and I didn't come here to complain. But I didn't know when I chose my profession, I didn't know when I chose to be a performer, that I would spend so much time away from home. Please don't think I'm moaning about this. I don't want to sing the blues with a loaf of bread under my arm, but I had no idea I would live so much of my time in hotels when I chose to be a performer. I didn't know I was dooming myself to an existence in these places where the hangers have no hooks. <laughs> oh good, I'm so glad I'm not alone in this thing. I don't want to be alone in this. Hotel hangers do not have hooks, people. Now I'm not talking about hotels in, in, in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is, everything has a hook. No. <laughs> but hotel, ha hotel hangers do not have hooks, people. If you've been there, if you've done any living in hotels, you know the hotel they have this little they have this little ring affair that slides on the bar. And, and you have to be very careful how you approach these things because the minute you touch them, they run away from you, don't they, you see? Hey, the bottom of the ring has, has a little notch in it, if you recall. It has a little, and the top of the hanger, instead of having a, a hook, it has a little wart. And this wart fits into the notch. Hanging your clothes in a hotel is strictly a two-handed operation. With one hand, you steady the ring. And with the other hand, you disengage the hanger. Meanwhile, you're holding your suit in your mouth. I'm frankly staggered when I contemplate the amount of energy that must have gone into this, the amount of effort to finally come up with a way to make hanging clothes harder. I understand that the man who invented the hookless hanger also holds a patent on an automobile door that opens inwards. Oh, that deserved more, much more than that. No. Oh, tell them, Jerry, there's no sense in trying to make up. I hold a grudge. No. How do you live with these people? How, that's it. Take pictures of them while they're sitting there looking at me dying. That's it. That's it, Jerry. Have the cameras face the audience so they can watch a man die and the whole world can see this. Now I've forgotten what I was talking about. Oh, yes. I, 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 how do you live? How do you trust these people who run hotels? How do you, do you, how do you trust these people who tell you this hotel is your home away from home? Is it? In your home, do you have a strip of paper around the toilet seat saying sanitize for your protection? <laughs> how do they go about doing that? I don't know what you envision. I envision masks and gowns and rubber gloves and stainless steel tools. They remove the toilet seat, take it downstairs, and boil it for 20 minutes. <laughs> but possibly the most difficult thing in hotels, possibly the most difficult of all, is room service. You are never going to get through to room service. You are not going to be able to deal with these people. You know, I don't care where you are in the world, and I have been a lot of places in this world, I don't care where you are, what country you're in, if you're in a hotel, they've brought someone in from another country to take the room service orders. Isn't it frightening how easy a man can become a leader? Anyway, here's the way it goes. Here's the way it goes. There's no getting through to room service, I assure you. Money, room service. I beg your pardon, I thought I dialed room service. Yeah, room service, money. Is this, is this uh, room service? Yeah, room service, money, help you. 
I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get that, sir. I, can't, I don't understand that. I have room, sir, my money, and help you. I, I'm embarrassed by this, sir. I really don't know what you're saying. I just don't understand the word help you. What are you saying to me, sir? Money, run, sir, do you want something? Can I have that one more time, please? Do you want something? One more time, slowly, please. Do you want something? Yes, this Jew would like something, yes, yes. <laughs> What you want, please? I'd like some eggs. Ace. Eggs. Ace. Is that the same as eggs? Yes, ace, ace. Out you light in. I beg your pardon? Out you light in. I'm sorry, I just don't understand that, sir. Out you light in. Out you lie, you ace. Pry, boy, pooch. Out you light in. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have my ace pooch. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I can't understand you. <laughs> and on that lovely note, I leave you with thanks. Good night. Shelley Vernon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Shelley. Beautiful spot. That's marvelous. If you, ladies and gentlemen, think that it's easy to stand in the middle of that stage after following the kinds of information that we've been feeding you for the last seven hours, believe me, that's difficult. And to do it that well is really a tribute to his ability. Thank you again, Shelley. Beautiful, beautiful job. I know the thrill of being a brand new father, as many of you do, but sometimes the thrill loses its sweetness when a dreaded disease appears. Please listen to this father's story. I want to tell you why I decided to do this. I truly owe a debt to Muscular Dystrophy Association. They were there when I needed them, and we were two very scared people. They were there when we needed someone to talk to. As the baby was born, I was outside watching through a glass window, and she just turned around and went like that to me. And I at first assumed that meant that she was okay, which was my first choice. But what it really meant, which I found out later, was that we had a little boy. <laughs> Two seconds later, the nurse came out and put him in my arms, and I looked at him, and of course, I cried like a little baby. I was so happy. So I really believe that was the happiest moment of my life. So as a new father, I wanted to learn as much as I could. In retrospect, that probably helped quite a bit, because after several weeks, when Lee was home, I noticed he had not been reaching the milestones that he should have been, which any little baby should have reached, such as picking his head up, starting to move and crawl in his crib. And we brought him down to our pediatrician. And I remember he took his little hammer that he uses to test reflexes and hit him on his knee and there was absolutely no reflex. Hit him on his arm and there was absolutely no reflex. And uh, he looked at us and he said, we have a very serious problem. Your baby has to go to the hospital right away. The hospital was was packed at the time so we had to keep him at home that night and we just sat up crying all night fantasizing that we were going to lose our boy and i remember i kept making deals with with god that night saying i'll take him if if he can't walk i don't care if he's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life i don't care as long as i have him i'll take him any way i can have him there was only one resident who was brave enough to come over to us and tell us, I think your child has what's called wernick hoffman disease. And it struck us like a bolt of lightning. Although I have to tell you, by that time we had already fantasized that that was what was gonna happen. We decided that we were gonna try our best to make whatever life he had as happy as possible. 
and to do the most we could to make him as comfortable as possible at home. There was a little game that we played with Lee that used to make him smile like crazy. He was such a bright little child. We tended to think that he mustered all his energy into his brain because he couldn't really move too well because he was paralyzed. And his smiles are really what kept us going, I think. If it wasn't for that, if we didn't feel that he was a happy little baby, there was really not much reason to keep him at home, I would think. We would probably have put him where we thought he could get the best medical care. But we were willing to try and learn ourselves how to take care of him because he was really such a joy to have around. It's been a little over two months now since Lee's gone. And I can't tell you the void that it's left in our lives. He just took up such a big part of our life that for the first few weeks after Lee was gone, Lynn and I were just kind of bouncing off the walls. We really didn't know whether we were coming or going. And we've just kind of gotten our feet on the ground in recent days. We really miss him. We miss him an awful lot. I think losing a child is the ultimate tragedy. As Mr. Alter says, it's a terrible thing to lose a child. Wernick Hoffman disease, which took the life of his child, is also known as spinal muscular atrophy. It's one of the 40 diseases MDA is fighting vigorously. Please help me help the families of babies and kids and adults with life-threatening muscle diseases. Your dollars will pay for the cures and treatments we're fighting to achieve through our worldwide research program. Thank you. Ed. Jerry, the 1985 Jerry Lewis Labor Day Telethon reached over 10 million Canadians. They, our great neighbors to the north, are totally committed with us in the fight against muscular dystrophy and its 40 related neuromuscular diseases. Jerry, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the Muscular Dystrophy Association of Canada, Thomas R. Nobles. Hello, Tom. Welcome. Jerry. Welcome. You know, Jerry, the Muscular Dystrophy Association of, of Canada has been a partner with you in the battle against muscular dystrophy for many years now. And we're delighted to be back with you again this year. It's been a particularly exciting year in Canada with Dr. Wharton's discovery regarding Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Dr. Wharton has made great strides at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, and we're closer than ever to finding the cause and the cure. We can't do it without the support of the public. Our doctors and researchers are working hard towards their goal, but they need your help. In Canada, our theme is one step at a time. Together, we can make it happen. By Americans and Canadians working together, we'll make it happen very soon, we hope. Thank you, Jerry, for all your hard work and support for this cause. And thank you to all the people in Canada who are working so hard this weekend and all year to help fight muscular dystrophy and its related disorders. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Tom. And my love to all the good people in Canada. Thank you. For the past 14 years, U.S. Navy recruiters from Las Vegas have been assisting us in escorting talent to and from our studios. We thank them for their help once again. They're terrific. Okay, now we present to you entertainment. Entertainment that really is, in the literal sense of the word, about the best you can get. He's my favorite old-time singer, and I know you're gonna love him, Mr. Julius LaRosa, ladies and gentlemen, right now. <laughs> the moon in its flight my thoughts all stray to you in the still of the night while the world is in slumber oh the times without
with an important message from MasterCard International. If we all give generously to Jerry's kids, we're going to make a miracle happen. Call 1-800-FIGHT-MD. A MasterCard volunteer will charge your contribution to these cards. Help us make a miracle. Please have your MasterCard Visa or American Express card handy when you call our toll-free number, 1-800-FIGHT-MD. Thank you, Casey. This next gentleman is best known for his great performance in several Woody Allen films, but nothing can rival the fine work he's doing right here for muscular dystrophy. I'd like you to pay close attention to Tony Roberts at one of our many pledge centers. Tony. Remember the first time you called somebody up to ask for a date? How you kept dropping the phone because your hands kept perspiring? Well, when you call us here at the Pledge Center, I can guarantee that you won't hear we can't talk to you because we're washing our hair. We really want to hear from you. Truly. Honest. Call us now. What you'll hear is, thanks for helping. We're waiting for your call. That great song stylist, Maureen McGovern. And one of the most popular headliners in Las Vegas, Diana Ross. And Mr. Blues himself, Joe Williams. Hang in there as the 1986 telethon 
continues. Stay with us for this next 15 minutes because we're going to bring you Marilyn Michaels, Perry King, Jackie Gleason, and live music from that classic group, The Birds. And to get things rolling, here's my good friend, Olympic gold medalist and MDA National Sports Chairman, Bart Connor. Bart, you have to be a Birds fan, are you? You bet I am, Casey. And you know, another good friend to all of us, especially Jerry's kids, is Jackie Gleason. And here he is with an important message from MasterCard International. Some kid's life is on the line. Won't you please get on the line and give to Jerry's kids? Call 1-800-FIGHT-MD. A MasterCard volunteer will charge your contribution to one of these cards. Help us make a miracle. Here's our toll-free number. 1-800-FIGHT-MD. Please have your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express card handy when you call. And our thanks to you, Jackie. Please, make that call right now, and I'll promise you this. If you pledge just a little bit more money than you think you should, you're going to feel that much better. Now, are you ready for some more great music from The Birds? Here they are with Chimes of Freedom, The Birds. Thank you. Don't go away. We want you right back for another song in just a moment. But first, here's our very good friend, Perry King, with a special message for every one of us. The decisions being made here will come about through careful consideration and sincere discussion. 
Sometimes, in fact, quite often, there are decisions that can affect the very lives of people like you and me. Now, there's an important decision that you can make right now that'll only take a few seconds, but it's a decision that can mean a lot to hundreds of thousands of people to affect their lives. Right now, you can decide to pick up your phone and make your pledge to the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Now, there are lots of good reasons why you should. For example, your pledge can help send a child with a muscle disease to an MDA camp for a one-of-a-kind week of fun, of laughter, and learning. It can help pay for the therapy and equipment that so many people with muscle diseases need so badly. It can help MDA-funded researchers find treatments and cures and win out over these destructive disorders at last. It's pretty hard not to make the right decision, the only decision. To phone in your pledge to MDA now, it's one of the best decisions you could ever make. Believe me. Thank you, Perry. And now, as promised, here once again are the birds with their exciting song, Christine. Fellas, more great sounds from the birds in a moment. But first, I want you all to meet Marty Hudgens. Seven years ago, we were just a typical American young family. My wife and I and, and two boys, ages 8 and 11 years old. But so when the doctor told me that she had ALS, I just couldn't believe it. I asked him what kind of life um, she could expect, and his picture wasn't very uh, pretty about how she would uh, lose her ability to speak, her ability to move any limb in her body, and that she might lose her ability to breathe. She was 29 years old. We found out that she was also pregnant. Well, nine months later, she did have a healthy mother, third son for us but by that time she was in a wheelchair. We arrived back home and then I had to talk to my two sons uh, to explain to them what was wrong with their mother and that she would not be getting well. She would not be able to get out like she was. Um, she would not be able to play games with them, cook them their dinners. 
but she would still be there and she would love them as much as she ever did before. When my mom first got sick, I kind of uh, blamed her. I thought she was like getting back at me for doing something that I'd done, something that offended her or something, but I thought she was getting back at me. But when my, my dad sat down and he talked to me and my brother, I kind of realized that it wasn't her that was trying to get it back at me, but just something that happened. He told us that it probably, you know, it was bad and it was going to get worse, and that uh, she probably wasn't going to get better or anything. And first, you know, I was kind of like, couldn't really believe it, because she was my mom and she'd always been OK. Uh, daily routine for me uh, would be starting in the morning. I uh, get up at uh, 6.30 in the morning and uh, prepare breakfast for the boys, get them up and get them ready for school say 8 o'clock in the morning, um, I would go to work. Uh, I might be there until 11 or 11.30 that night. Uh, I would come home uh, after my activities and I'd prepare Marty for bed. That might take uh, anywhere from 45 minutes to two or two and a half hours to get her comfortable. ALS is a terrible thing to happen to somebody. The future for both people. It affects not only the victim, but the victim's family or the loved ones. I find it so difficult to realize that I still have someone here that I love very much that can't return it or give you a hug or return any affection that, that, you, that you give to them. Well, ALS isolates. It isolates the victim because they can't get out, they can't move, they can't move around. 